Hi there, my name is Zachary Lanchman. You know me, founder and CEO of Aperture Science. And today we have a box, but not just any box. This box is a very special box. It contains the SIM-1, an old computer from 19-something or other, and it's one of the very first computers to use the legendary 6502 processor. So, we got a box, and we've got a knife, and I think you know where this is going. And this is Zachary's dad at the editing stage dropping in to mention this isn't just any SIM-1. This SIM-1 was owned by Richard Teitelbaum. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. If you know of a better pronunciation, please leave a comment below. Among other things, Richard was the first person to bring a Moog synthesizer to Europe. So that's pretty cool. So while I'm taking the outer layers of the packaging off, why don't we let Professor Lanchman do some talking about this computer? So the SIM-1 is actually something like an enhanced version of the Kim one. The Kim one was basically a demonstration board for the 6502 processor, and I think it came out in 1975. So basically the Kim one was just a, hey, check it out, we got a 6502 processor that you can buy by the jar full. Fellas were like, yo, this, this uh, Kim one board is pretty cool. Why don't we make a full-on computer out of this? So that's what they did, I'm presuming. Yeah, so from my understanding, the Kim One was actually designed by Chuck Peddle, who was involved with the design of the original 6502. Okay, let's see what's in the box here. And we got some bubble wrap. A lot of it. Oh, wait, we've actually got something electronic. We've got a ribbon cable, it seems like, um, wrapped in a lot of bubble wrap. Wow, that's going to be satisfying to pop later. Okay. We've also got a strange yellowish package on the side here. I'm going to carefully extract that. It's like Christmas come early. We've got another package. Ooh, that kind of got a little ripped. Oh, that's going to happen. No, no worries. we got more packaging. Another little thing here. Whoa, that's a lot of bubble wrap. Um, oh, okay. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. Okay. We have... Um, Oh, this ribbon cable is actually connected to something inside this package here. Okay. Now, is there anything else under here, or is that just all packaging? No, this is just, that's just a ludicrous amount of bubble wrap. Okay. But, okay, let's take okay. a look. Okay, very well packed. At this, which is the first thing that comes out. Ooh, that, I think one or two of the wires there is disconnected. Ooh. Oh, we'll have to figure it out later. We're going to have to resolder that. Well, let's take this out of its case. What is this? So um, this is the actual SIM-1. I'm seeing... Oh, yep, there's the 6502 main processor, along with something for inputting hex codes. Yep, so we have a... Get the knife away from the ribbon cable. Okay, yeah, so all sorts of craziness going on here. So hopefully next semester I'll convince some students to take this on and get this working. Daddy, if you zoom way there on that green wire, that there's disconnected. We'll, we'll have to check it out later. Yeah, we're going to need to fish up a data sheet for this thing and see what exactly this gigantic ribbon cable is. Uh, yeah, so this is the AA connector. Alcoholics Anonymous? <laughs> Something like that. Anyway, let's see what's in the other other boxes here. Right. So, did this thing connect to, like, an external monitor and keyboard, or, like, is this just the 16-bit display and input? Well, this is, uh, you probably has some sort of serial connection. Remember the MSI? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so remember how we hooked up the MSI or the um, the Chromimco, the serial connection that you helped debug? Remember when I had the ground pin in the wrong spot? Ah, uh, yes. Cereals, part of a natural and healthy breakfast. Yes, the cereal you connection. You've got a metallic box that looks like a piece of World War II equipment, and a screw just fell out of it. That's yeah, worrying. so whatever this is... This looks like it's a custom-made box. This was not something that's part of the original SIM-1. This was actually created by someone. That's an XLR port right there. Yeah, I don't know if it's actually... With, oh, hey, the, this connector that we found earlier, this ribbon connector, I bet this... this oh, yeah, here. this is SIM-AA, so this connector here connects to this mysterious box here. I wonder what it's Ooh, for. This connects, and th here's some, oh, oh that, 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 well, something bottom just Oh, off. I love this, look at this. So this is oh, entirely this is homemade. Yeah, this was uh, entirely homemade, something or the other to do stuff. Well, there are like five MIDI ports on there, so I'm guessing it was for like audio and judging by the well, XLR video. The thing to remember is MIDI uses this five pin connector, 
but this device was actually built before MIDI existed. So uh, they're using this five pin connector for some other purposes. Oh, piano? There's something here that says piano. Oh. That's interesting. Here's, it uh, looks Cass. like for a cassette. Uh, not sure what what this one other here is for. 50 year old duct tape. Oh, it looks like maybe another cassette thing. Uh, not sure what this down here is for. Oh, huh. okay, so we'll have to check that out. That's really interesting. Half a century old DIY project here. I'm just gonna put this back on and um, yeah, <laughs> it's held together with duct tape. I gonna... love it. No, this is this is fantastic. Oh, there's a comment here. This connects to slot five or one thirty-one. Not sure. I just saw some. I'm just gonna slot put this. Three. I'm not sure. I'm just gonna put this screw back here. Oh, just don't worry about it. Let's see what's in the rest of the containers here. All right, what's in this thing? What's inside package number three? It's um, what seems to be a, a touch and go foot control. A pedal oh, let's, let's take sort. them out. Let's see what's inside here. Uh, this is the one that had the strange extra switch here. Uh, we got some foot pedals. Okay. Looks like and... the owner of this thing was using this for music purposes. Yes. So I'll talk about that a little later. Uh, okay, so there's a, okay, so this is how the game controller and the original Apple II hooked in, just these kind of pins that would go into an IC socket on the motherboard, not a great design. Um, and then there's this box, all of this goes into this box. Oh, okay, God. the foot pedals go into the box. It smells like the 70s. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll probably want to clean this up a bit and then figure out, so something goes here. Oh man! But I'm not sure what that then hooks to. Wait, Dad, pan back to the pan, pan back to this connector. Those are all bent up. Take a good look at that. Yeah, well, that's typical. We'll we'll fix that all up and figure out what was going on here. Um, let's see. This should plug into something. Um, yep. I need to figure out. Okay, let's see if this came with any documentation. Oh well, it's probably in here, or maybe judging by the shape of it, I'm guessing it's a keyboard. Possibly. I don't know. Either of the Alpha Probably not. or of the musical variety. Oh, what's oh. this? Oh, it's a connector. The kind of, it's it's one of those boards uh -huh. that you could uh, plug into old machines. And over here we have whatever this is. Oh, wow. Okay, so we have sliders. Oh, so, hey, that must be what that third uh, switch was for that came. This, yeah, this, that probably, okay, this, that, this, doohickey. this doohickey probably snaps oh, on there somehow. And so we have some sliders. Yeah, that just goes right on there. Yeah. Okay, this is awesome. For so something. these sliders go to this board here. So what's this board here? Uh, A, D, slot seven. So this is John Bell Engineering. So I need to figure out who John Bell is. 16 channel, A to D converter, copyright 1981. Hmm, all right, early yeah. 80s. Let's see, is that all the stuff we found? Yeah, that's all the uh, yeah. stuff. Whoever was using this was using it to do something with all of this stuff, to interface with these foot pedals and with these sliders. And there's a thing on the box here that says piano. Although actually, depending on when, let's see. So the, the Sim one itself, I think is from 1978. But maybe this is from some later experiments that were using MIDI. I don't know. Because hmm. it does say piano. Well, if I had to wager a guess, the guy that originally bought this um, heavily modified it and made some extra extensions and decided to use it for um, electronic music synthesizing. Yeah. Or check this out. So this connector here has that, but it also has uh, this business here. Oh, wow. I think yeah. some of the pins there are just straight up missing. So probably what we'll start is we'll start with figuring out how to just get this board going. Uh, the other thing that I'll be interesting to know is if the programs in here are the original that came in or if maybe whoever owned this was making their own ROMs with their own programs. I guess, the latter, find out. I guess the latter based on the um, hand-drawn labels. Wait, power supply. Dad, we never got a power supply with this doohickey. Oh, that's okay. We can rig something up. Yeah, when you say rig something up involving power supplies, I get vivid nightmares of the time that you set the Apple II on fire. I didn't set... Oh, well, okay, no, it was on a fire, but smoke came. Okay, smoke came out. <laughs> 
and, but it was not technically on fire. We didn't see flames. There was an exploded capacitor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I swear I didn't set it on fire. Okay. Excellent. The SIM-1 and associated hardware that you see in this video were sold to me at a very reasonable price by Daniel Fishkin, who is one of Richard Teitelbaum's students. He's a PhD student at the University of Virginia. He has a website called Defiction describing a lot of his work, and a lot of it's really, really cool. So I recommend that you go check it out. And it turns out there's a musical instrument called a daxophone. So I hadn't heard about daxophones before, but Daniel makes daxophones. So if you wind up needing a daxophone, I guess contact Daniel and see what he can do.